pull some rocks or peas or peas out. Maybe you can just shove your finger up. Hey, maybe your son will give you some lessons. That would be so much. And he won't stop. I love you. And I love to teach you to learn the lesson. Learn the lesson. Learn the lesson. Learn the lesson.
not for a visit, but just to give you a mug and say thank you for worshiping with us. That mug is going to be filled with information that tells about the many ministries, the many ways that we have to serve our Lord, that we have to serve people in this community and beyond, and to serve one another. So I hope all that sounds good to you. In the meantime, we just ask that everyone enjoy the fellowship that is present in this place today. Thank you. We have attendance pads, and they are in the chairs in the, the middle aisles here. So please take that attendance pad, sign your name to it, pass it on down. We do like to know who's here, and that gives us that little bit of information. But it also helps us to figure out who might not be able to be here today. That way we can do a little bit better job of staying in touch with our whole church family. So we appreciate you helping us with that. If you will open your bulletins to ministry opportunities and events, I've got a few things that I'm going to try to cover quickly. The first one is a little handout that was in your bulletin, and it is called Financial Peace. And Financial Peace is going to be presented here at the church uh, beginning in March, and it's going to be led by Sean Kreider. So I'm going to ask you to read the little bit of information that's on here. Get in touch with Sean if you have an interest or if you have more questions, and he will be glad to point you in the right direction on that. You may notice that this is also a handy little handout so that uh, you can take this and pass it to someone in your neighborhood, someone that you work with, and it will give them information about financial peace. And by the way, a lot of things that are coming up in the church very soon. So we thank you for helping us with that. There is a new member potluck today at 5.30 here in Becker Hall. We hope that all of you that have joined the church in 2013, and for the couple that joined uh, already in 2014, we want you to be here tonight at 5.30. We're going to have a great potluck, a lot of fun, and a lot of fellowship. So we hope that you will be here. We do have uh, nursery care that will be provided. So if you have a tiny one and, and still want to come, uh, we can help provide with that too. Cooper School children will be here to sing this Thursday at 1130 in our sanctuary. Um, it's, it's a blessing to hear these kids sing. We hope that you will come and help us celebrate their getting out and performing in front of an audience. And so that will be fun. If, if you have time at 1130 this Thursday, put it on your calendar. Moving forward, this is a men's group that is being led by Reverend Albert Fisher, and he is going to provide a lunch this Wednesday at 1130 in the chapel, and it is for any men in the church uh, or outside the church who have lost a loved one. So come and, and meet with Reverend Fisher and find out what that's all about and how you might be able to benefit from such a meeting. Thank you. Um, the last thing I'd like to tell you about is that the caregiver support group, that's going to be tomorrow uh, morning at 9 o'clock. We have a big write-up on it here. It's not for everybody, but if it can meet some of your needs, please feel welcome to come to the chapel tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and you can read all the details right here. Uh, our youth are still in need of volunteers to bring a light supper or snacks for their Wednesday night meetings that they have here at the church. If you are interested in doing that or want to know more of the details, just call the church office or stop by the church office and we'll be glad to, to give you that information. Bye. All right, now you got one more you have to go for. I want to say thank you from the ministry of the church, the children's ministry. They collected coats for children, not only for children, but also for youth and adults. And this year you gave more than what's on this board by a long shot but this is a thank you and let you know that every coat that you have given it's they've all been given out and presented we had two really cool looking little coats that were left a couple of weeks ago but those even those last two are gone and so we want to say thank you for all the coats that you've given so sometimes we, we fail to let you know what you've done and so we want you to know and they they went to schools they went to shelters and they went to community organizations. And so don't ask me any other questions. All right. Talk to, talk, talk to um, Kristen Crowder. She can tell you more about that. We are going to ask you to do something for us for the season of Lent. 
In the season of Lent, we would like you to bring a cross that you will then take back home with you. And if you would bring that cross and put your name on the bottom of it or on the back of it, or so some way that you can identify it so that we make sure that you're able to get your cross. We're going to be displaying crosses here in Lent that you brought. They will be displayed during Becker Hall and the sanctuary and the narthex. You're able to bring those all throughout Lent. But um, we'll have a collection place for you to place those, and then we will be displaying those on a weekly basis. So we want you to begin thinking about those and bring that as you're able. I have one last thing, and that is um, our mission of the month for March is the Wesley Foundation. The Wesley Foundation has been in a kind of a transition over the last few years with reload, um, the building being changed, and part of it being torn down, and now there's been a change land swap at the university, so they're going to be at a new location, and they're going to be rebuilding. We have a video that is, we're only showing partial part of the video, but if you want to be on the website for the Wesley Foundation, you can watch all of the video, but their goal is to reach um, college students, as they call them, the Razorback Nation for Christ, while they are in college, and they're, they're seeking to do that. The Wesley Foundation director his name is Omar and I want this will be Omar who will be speaking with you so I want you to, to watch the video. In 2008 I began to serve as the executive director of the Wesley Foundation at the University of Arkansas. There were only a few students who met each week for a Bible study and not much else. The past few years had seen the campus ministry facilities fall into disrepair and some of them have been torn down. And after 60 years, the heart of campus had moved up the hill, leaving Wesley almost alone. By now, Wesley had no kitchen, no offices, and no running water. The only facility was a porta potty out back, and that made doing ministry on campus almost impossible. So we started to pray. In our prayers, we asked God a single question. Why is the Methodist Church at the University of Arkansas? And the answer was simple. We are here to love the Razorback Nation with the heart of Christ. So we began to discern how we could love and serve the students, faculty, staff, alumni, and greater community of the university through outreach and discipleship. How could we serve the Razorback Nation without expecting anything in return? We started doing little things, like taking popsicles to the marching band during two-a-day practices or opening up the chapel for freshmen during rush week to come in from the heat, take a nap, or get something to eat. And we go deep into the scriptures and theology of the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, what it meant to be called by God in the name of Jesus Christ, and to worship and share the sacraments together.
You're a girl scout.
And now I'd like you to go to me before the Lord's so the praise. And after we have had this time in prayer, the ushers will be coming down and forward to receive our tithes and offerings, which is an act of our worship unto the Lord. So we, we invite you to participate in this as your time of worship. And we're so grateful for all that you give and for all that we have to give to honor our Lord. How about you now to join me? Father, we thank you so much for this day. For you're a God of blessing, you're a God of help, you're a God of strength. So that when we find ourselves in times of weakness, you are our strength. When we find ourselves in need of transition, you are our, you are our God that redeems. And when we find ourselves hopeless, when we find ourselves strength, weak, you are our strength. So we as sons and daughters, your children, we come this morning. But Father, we thank you for all that you've seen us through and for all that you've helped and you've given us strength for. And we thank you that our faith is always growing and it's becoming stronger and it's igniting. And Father, we ask you for your help. Help us when we cannot see the light and feel clouded by darkness. Reveal your strength and your presence. When we're having trouble making a decision and we need your guidance, Father. May we hear you speaking to us in any number of ways. Father, in all that we are, all that we ever hope to be, it's all about you. We pray for us as not only as individuals, but for our church. Lord, help us to be the church that you would want us to be. Help us to love, to learn, and help us to lead so that ultimately, in the name of Jesus Christ, is sweet upon all our lips and our homes. We pray today for Bella Vista Community Church, for the pastor, for the leadership team, for the congregation there, as well as all the churches of our community. We pray for Pastor Lee as he brings the message. And over the offering today, we may all that we give be a blessing to you. Father, use it for the building of your kingdom, to the sharing of the power of salvation that is discovered and found and known through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in his holy name we pray, and together we say, Amen. Amen. <coughs>
Some of this is happening in the streets of the town, some of it may be inside, but a lot of it's outside. So as we get to this portion of the story, Jesus and the disciples are together. They're actually on the street, maybe trying to leave town. And just previous to that, they've been teaching. The crowds have come to them, he taught them, told them different stories, and told them some different rules and regulations. But the very last thing that happens is that Jesus is welcoming the crowds and the people are bringing children to him. If you remember that story. The crowds are bringing the children to him and the disciples say, no, no, keep the children back. But Jesus says, no, let the little children come. Because to really receive salvation is to have faith like a child. So we go from that into the disciples of Jesus leaving town. And we're going to start with verse 28 in chapter 10. And Peter's a little confused here. And he's talking to Jesus and he says, Look, we've left everything to follow you. We're standing on the side of the road with you. We're traveling. We've left everything to follow you. And Jesus says to him, He says, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left his house, his brothers, or his sisters, his mother, his father, his children, or his fields. Or fields means possessions. For my sake, or for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Who will not receive now a hundredfold of houses, of brothers, of sisters, mothers, children, and fields of possessions with persecution. And in the age to come, we receive eternal life. But, many who are first will be last, and the last will be first first. So Jesus has been with Jesus. Peter has been with Jesus. And they're coming out of town, and things have happened. And he, he says, we left everything. Look what we've been doing. He says, look what we've given up. Look at us. Who are we? We've followed you. What about us? What's in this for us? Jesus tells him, don't worry. Everything that you've given up, your family, your home, your place that you live, all your possessions, will be made up a hundredfold, not just in eternity, but now, right? He says, in this age. But, with persecution, with difficulty. Don't you hate the butts in life? <laughs> Nobody did. <clears throat> and then the other one is, but the last will be first and the first will be last. Not much of an answer, I don't think. I'm sure Peter's a little bit confused because the first thing I want to ask, well, who's first and who's last? But not just who's first and who's last. Am I first or am I last? Where do I fit in? So we look back again. We move in our mystery story. We look for a few more clues. And we back up to Mark chapter 10. And I'm going to begin with verse 17. We'll start to hear a little bit of the story. Maybe learn why Peter's got some real anxiety in his life. Verse 17 is the beginning of them leaving town. As they're setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before Jesus and asked him, Man runs up to Jesus on the side of the road as they're trying to leave town. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? Thus the children say. No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness and you shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And the man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. So Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked. He went away grieving because he had a lot of stuff. See why Peter might be a little anxious? What about me? What about them? What can I do? It's a big question that the man asked Jesus that Peter's following up on. The question is, 
What must I do to inherit eternal life? It's a life and death question. It's a heaven and hell question. Big question, right? Jesus begins with kind of a compliment to me when he says that, why do you call me good because only God is good? He's actually complimenting the man because he's saying, I know that you realize that I'm God. You're calling me good because I am good, because I am Jesus Christ. It's important that we recognize that Jesus loved this man. He tells him, you know, he looks at him, he loves him. Because he loves him, he tells him the truth. And the truth is hurt sometimes. He kept all the commandments. This probably Jewish man, very probably pious man, he kept all the commandments. But Jesus required more. He requires more of us. He said, sell your possessions, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. So does he come back? We don't know. We're never told. I've read some commentaries They said, well, the man made up his mind. He left. Well, we don't know if he made up his mind. We don't know if he went and sold his possessions and came back. We don't know if he went and kept his possessions. We don't know what he did. We can't pass judgment. A big part of the last is first and the first is last. Is we're not the judge. We're not the jury. That's not the end of the story. Jesus goes on. I'm sure... Gives Peter some extra anxiety. We start at verse 23. He asks the disciples questions. I question. After witnessing what's going on, he looks at him and he said, How hard how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. So Jesus looked at the disciples again and said, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? With no answer, he said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible but not for God. For God, all things are possible. How hard is it to get in the kingdom of God if you have a lot of stuff? Impossible. That's what Jesus said. Do you imagine how anxious you would be standing on the side of the road and you'd either given up stuff or didn't know if you had stuff or you just came and you greeted him and he said, go get rid of it? He said, it's impossible. Without God. So who then, the disciples said, because like now, back then, it was pretty much given that if you had a lot of wealth and a lot of money, you were on top of the world and you could take care of yourself and people would take care of you. Is it any different today? Do we look at our money as salvation? Do we look at what we have and understand that we'll be okay? But it's not impossible. What Jesus says is everything is possible for God. But I still look at Pete, the end of this story as someone that has experienced with Jesus all the stories. Jesus called them out saying, Look, children, you have been with me. You have heard my stories. You've walked with me. And you still don't understand what I'm telling you. Peter says, Look, Jesus, we're trying. What do we do? Look at us. Look, what do we do? Look what I've given up, Lord. Look what I've sacrificed. Look how far I've come. Look, Jesus, we're here. We're walking with you. We're standing with you. We are here. What about us? What about us, Jesus? We are right here. We haven't left. And we won't leave. Jesus answers, and you will be blessed now and with eternal life, kinfold, but with struggles. And the bigger but. Many who will first and be last and the last will be first. And we get no answer. We get no answer of who is last and who is first. 
But we've been given the story. We've been given the story to know that we're all walking with Jesus. That we've all been called to look at how we live this life. We've been called to look at our stuff. Are we called to give it up to the poor? Or are we called to do something else? We're called to, are we going to lose? What are we going to lose? What are we going to get? Where are you walking with Jesus? What road are you with him on? Are you last or are you first? The good news is, I'm not here to judge. And neither is someone sitting next to me. Because only God knows if I'm first or if I'm last, or if you're last or you're first, or if we're all stuck somewhere in the middle, wandering along. But regardless of where we are, we are walking. We're walking with God where anything is possible. Even the rich serve salvation. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather together for worship, we give thanks for the so many things that we have. A place to be, songs to sing, friends to hold our hand. Lord, we pray for those among us who are struggle. For the poor among us in spirit and in wealth. So Lord, help us to understand our place. Whether it's to be the first or be the last, we know your salvation comes. So Lord, thank you for your miracle. For your being the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. The voice we hear calling each of us to return. In your holy and blessed name we Amen. As the praise team comes forward for our invitational song this morning, know that this is a time of invitation. We named it so because you're invited to come forward to join our church, whether it's through professional faith, or through transfer of membership, or another church family, another United Methodist church, or another denomination. Know that you're invited at this time. You don't have to be prepared. Sometimes there are people that fill out their framework and prepare and tell us when they're coming. That's great. If you just want to join, you can always come and we fill out paperwork later. Lord, we've got enough to pay for work in. So, just know that you're invited. You're invited to come forward and be prayed with and for. Know that this is your time to worship your God, to walk with Jesus as we prepare to kill our Lord.
tonight. Well, there, there, before our benediction, I have one last opportunity for you, Brother James, just inform me that we're trying to transition this space from a word type uh, time of worship into our potluck for the evening. So you have the opportunity. We need six more round tables that will come out here to join these chairs that we already have out. And there may be a couple longer. So if you're able, we appreciate it. Take a moment to stay and do that. It's actually a good time to fellowship. Meet somebody new and have a little time of fellowship as you do a little bit of work. But know as we go today that our God, <coughs> that our God is capable of the ultimate miracle, the salvation for all, whether we're first or last, God is here for us. So as we leave here today, know that we go as the church, we go as God's church. Amen. Mm-hmm.